hey friends welcome back to another weekly energy video um it's may 2023 yeah so about that like um spread of the year i was gonna post it's we're now entering into the fifth month of the year and i still haven't made that video here's the thing like it's not important it's not important because i'm going to get to all that stuff as we go through it however I do believe it is worthwhile to look at astrology um, on sort of like this day-to-day, -day, week to week basis like we're doing here. And if you have apps on your phone, then like astrology apps on your phone, then you can get like personalized transit information day-to-day, -day, week to week, if you heard of like the pattern, co-star and all that stuff. But it's also really beneficial to look at like the larger scope of things, the arcs and May, the month of May, if anything else, is giving us a really good opportunity to look at large scale changes that are happening. Um, freedom, revolution, stability, security. Those are some of the themes for this month coming up. Also, crossroads is a really big theme as well. Crossroads and the need to choose. Um, old new paradigms over the old paradigms as well as i feel the fifth house and tenth house are activated this month fifth house is the house of creativity um, joy youthfulness childhood your creativity did i say that already i don't know and the tenth house the house of ambition uh, respectively ruled by leo and capricorn but then also we have quite a bit of um transits with Jupiter this month so I feel like the ninth house as well the house of journeying and adventures and I feel like the ninth house ties together very well this like fifth to tenth house energy um I don't know if there is there's probably more to that that I'm not 100% aware of but that's my read on the month ahead the card for the month of May from the very lovely tarot deck Illuminated Love Oracle is the card Approach with Curiosity. Behold the world with wonder. Allow yourself to be brand new. Does that sound familiar? We've had that card before and it's been a big theme this year. Allow yourself to be brand new as you lean into the adventure of this opportunity. Adventure, ninth house. Adventure of this opportunity. Experience worlds previously unknown. So be in awe of everything in life. So it's like the whole first quarter we've been tapping into new feelings, new sensations, coming to know ourselves a little bit better in the good and the bad, the light and the dark, all of it, right? All of it. And understanding that we, wherever we are in life right now, we have evolved to be here in this position from some previous position. And so like the understanding and the, the, being able to see that and like to feel yourself changing, it is ever more causing many more people to sort of wake up and by <laughs> wake up, oh man, Florida is where woke goes to die. <laughs> that was funny. That was funny. Cause like woke just wouldn't to awaken. To be awake is to be aware of yourself. Uh, simple. Be aware of yourself. So it's been a very internal focus and I feel like May is showing us how those internal focuses, internal dialogues, everything internalized, our desires, everything that we are, shapes everything around us and colors everything around us. Our perception is everything. It's everything. So approach it with curiosity. That is for the month of May. And I mean, did I show this to you already? I'm pretty sure I did. But like, there's a very real 12-month um, spread calendar that I, I am using. Be quiet, Siri. Uh, okay, so anyways, the monthly overview and so now we're at the first week of may may 1st through the 7th we have a full moon in scorpio at the same time venus is transiting jupiter at a sextile which is a very pleasant aspect 
um, full moons are fulfillment, realization, illumination. What are we coming to be illuminated of? Everything that needs to be let go of. And I know that sounds very routine to say about a full moon, but no, seriously, this is um, the last ditch effort. It's the realization that you can have what you want to have. You can do what you want to do and you could be who you want to be the minute you get out of your own way. If you can understand that you're holding those limits, you're holding yourself to your own limits, you're setting your own limits in certain ways, you can definitely um, surpass the perception of your current reality into what you might consider a fantasy reality. And um, if you remember, there was some time ago where, where fantasy was sort of playing a part where we're like, let's not get carried away in the illusions of the shadows of what's there. Needless to say, this is going to be a very intense week um, as well. The week kicks off with Pluto starting its retrograde. Pluto is the main subject in astrology at the present moment. Uh, Pluto spends 20-some years in each sign. Was it 28 years? I'm going off of my memory. Don't quote me. So it takes like over 200 years for Pluto to go to across the entire zodiac into the sign where it is now. It just moved into Aquarius, the sign of innovation. <laughs> um... Innovation, society, just everything having to do with doing things for the greater good. And so, whereas Capricorn was a little bit more uh, ruthless and hierarchical, hierarchical and ambitious and just wanting to do the work, um, Aquarius begins to ask the question, wait a minute, why are we doing this again? And so with Pluto going into retrograde, uh, it's still in Aquarius, but that means that it's eventually going to come back into Capricorn for a period of time. This little dance between Aquarius and Capricorn, this is one of the things that is contributing to us feeling this on and off switch between old and new paradigms. So old and new paradigms for yourself, uh, for your identity, for your context, your place in the world, who you want to be, how you want to show up. It's bringing uh, fearlessness. I wrote, we don't play power dynamics. Hierarchies are dead. Respect for every human. Um, some other things to ponder this week with Lilith coming into a square with the sun. How do your deepest desires challenge who you currently are? How has the repression of your desires over time in your life even if the desire is to express myself freely, how has, how has the restrictions on your gifts, how have the restrictions on your gifts, or how have the restrictions on you being who you really are to your core, how have those limitations turned you into who you are today? And are you realizing this week, especially, that you don't have to be that? Um, it may have been true, like whether it was your upbringing or your peers or your workplace environment. We are like water. We take the form of the things around us. It takes a lot of energy to stand on your own, to be true to yourself. It's not a simple thing. Many people will behave like it is but it actually takes a lot of work and it takes a lot of deconditioning. And so we are all collectively deconditioning with this full moon Scorpio. Uh, practice a lot of patience uh, for yourself and for others. Ask for clarity. Um, again, here we go, identify your hidden desires. Look, because they're the key. It is, it is your key to, the key to your most fulfilling life. Oh boy, and then uh, wait, before I get to this next thing, I just want to ask another question that I wrote here. What took the place or filled the space that would otherwise be there had you not repressed or suppressed these other parts of you or had those things sort of taken away? Whatever your 
reality and version of that is. What is the thing that you really wanted? Why didn't you get it? Or have it or be it? And what can you do now with what you have and who you are in this present moment to choose to, to be who you want to be, do and have the things that you want to have? Outside existing reality. Rea and reality is perception, so... <laughs> Man, this is going to be a messed up video. Reality is your perception. Your perception is not the total reality. There are so many things happening spontaneously and simultaneously. I think the moment we can, real we can remember that, we, will we can realize that what we perceive and think and feel on the daily is just a fraction of what is really there. So what do you want to tap into? All of this, everything, uh, potentially, every single thing, option, is available to you. I think that's why this Venus square Neptune is really how how it, that's coming in because it reminds me of seven of cups. It reminds me well like oh well if I can have anything that means I can have anything and then we get in like a uh, almost entrapped in our by our own desires to say well I don't know maybe I don't know what I really want right we start to second guess those things. But really what this week is about is tapping into the, the, the kinds of the desires that you know have always been there that you don't question. Um, there is a time, and we will get to it later this month, for making strides and sturdy, <laughs> sturdy, um, significant forward movement in the things that you want to have. But this is about reclaiming you this week. And... So, look, we're going to have a Sagittarius moon weekend. Sag moon is the ninth house again, expansion. We will find security and feel stable in exploring our, our philosophies of life, um, learning about things previously unknown, um, taking up some sort of study. At the same time, over the weekend, Venus moves into Cancer. Ooh. <laughs> It's a very sensitive placement and the focus is on am I giving enough? Am I giving enough to be receiving enough? Or <laughs> how am I giving, how am I receiving? You see, there's, there is like this sort of um, I don't know if I can call it this, but maybe I can. This, this question of self-worth, this question of, am I an adequate lover? Hold on, that's not what I wanted to say, but like, am I lovable? Am I doing enough to be lovable? Um, are others satisfied with my presence? But look, cancer is really fluid too. These are our, so Cancer's dealing with fluidity, our sacred emotions and ambitions. Themes of loyalty, okay, affirmation, sensitivity, intuitive and affectionate. That's Cancer. Mm, and, you know, this isn't really next week's energy, but I'm, we're, we're sort of dipping into it anyway. But there is, um, right, this like idea that I'll be safe and I'll be wanted if I'm useful. And so, again, we're, we're doing something out of an inherent belief that we're not enough. And so I think Venus in Cancer is going to have us looking at, looking at the ways where our shadow comes out to play in the most nuanced ways. Like, we all have shadow bits to ourselves that um, <laughs> inspired by, motivated by things that have happened to us in the past. It affects how we show up in our relationships, how we show up to different elements of our life depending on what, what's going on there. Even if you've learned your lesson a number of times or integrated a lesson a number of times to say, oh, I know I have trust issues, so when I get paranoid thoughts about someone doing X, Y, Z, I know that I 
can check myself and bring myself back to, you know, some zone, right? Even if that is, even if you have your like, I have this track <laughs> of my, I, I'm tracking my shadow. That shadow is also working in other areas of your life. And you may not see it, but others do. So this is also that kind of sensitivity and vulnerability where nobody can hide anymore. Nobody is really able to hide from their trauma and especially not among others. So I will say, I really hope that you're surrounding yourself with really loving, caring people. Um, maybe it's been your experience that you've already, especially last week. Man, I didn't even start this video talking about last week, but last week leading up to the eclipse, the new moon eclipse was really intense. And then as soon as it was like a day or two afterward, just like intense creativity for me, feeling like I got a lot of energy. I'm like creating things and, and editing a lot of different videos and, and all that. And so there is like this um, productive energy that's present, but at the same time, it's asking us to be present with um, our emotions. Make sure that you're feeling your feelings. There's been a lot of creativity in the last week and I, th I think it's still with us here now. And um, to that, I would just wanna say, you know, something to help you release um, whatever you wanna do, you know, for this full moon. I highly recommend a forgiveness ceremony. Um, as well as find ways to play and to keep light. If the ninth house is sort of like the action and the ambition of the fifth house, right? Like catalyzing the fifth house to the tenth. What am I trying to say? Make sure that you're making um, decisions based on the things you really want to know and learn in life, the things you want to achieve. It has those and those things should somehow be tied to what really inspires you to feel joyful. These are emotions that are incredibly worth investing in today. Okay, because your experience is everything. Things don't matter. All right. I'm going to leave it there. It's really not my intention for these videos to be very long. I'm actually trying to keep them shorter, but if I um, I guess I'll just keep practicing. I really appreciate each of you being here and watching my videos. Um, by the way, I just updated my website. I'm obsessed. If you want to go leave me um, a comment, I mean, uh, shoot me a message via the contact form on my website um, with a nice message, that would be great. Mm, don't forget to check out the recommended listening below. I already know what it is. And um, what other updates? You know, I'm going to be traveling again this month, so I'm going to be looking at maybe recording a couple videos ahead of time to be released um, and do things a little bit that way. But that's not for you to worry about. That's on me. All right. I love you all so much. Bye.